years ago when we first started the church. I met a family in our children's ministry, a husband and wife and their elementary school age daughter. About five, five and a half years ago, she discovers that he's in a relationship with another guy. And in six months, they're divorced. And then some months after the divorce was finalized, he shows up here at our North Point campus with his partner and she's here and she is mad at ad, three syllable mad, okay? <laughs> she is uh, uh, upset and she got in his face and she said, look, this is my church. You know, you cause this problem. You go to any church you want to in Atlanta, but you can't come to, this is my church. I need a worship free, I need a trauma free zone. And so you go somewhere else. And basically she kicked him and his partner out of our church and so they left. Well, as you know, we have lots of churches in the city of Atlanta, and as it turned out, they decided to attend a different one of our churches, and it was the one that was closest to them, so they attended Buckhead Church. And as the story goes, the very, if I remember this right, the very first Sunday they showed up at Buckhead Church was our Strategic Service Sunday. And in Strategic Service Sunday, we spend the entire time recruiting people to volunteer. And so my friend's partner, said, hey, I like this church. I think we should get involved. So on the first Sunday they're there, they go down and sign up to, to be in strategic service and join a host team, one of our guest services team. What I knew, and I double checked with her to make sure I was correct, was the last I, where we had left off was he, my friend's partner, and he's a friend now, but back then not so much. My friend's partner was still married. And the divorce is taking longer than, than they expected. It's kind of getting dragged out. So I called my buddy, and said, okay, I know things have been awkward, you know, between us, but look, uh, and, and I'm glad you're in church, that's a good thing, and I'm glad you're at one of our churches, you know, that's a good thing, but your partner, he's, he's still married. So see, this is just good old-fashioned adultery, like you're in a sexual relationship with someone else's husband. Uh, you know, it was, you know, I've never said that before. But anyway, so I said, so you can't be on a guest services team. Okay. This is, you're just living in, you know, this is, this is clear. Okay. You can't do this. You're married or you're not. As long as he's married, you can't serve on a, host, on a guest services team. And so I kind of, you know, kicked him off the team. And I asked her first, I said, who's coming? She said, well, um, my boyfriend, his daughter, me, my daughter, my ex-husband, and his partner. I need six seats. And so, you know, halfway in our first Christmas carol, I'm sitting here, I'm standing here in my corner chair, singing, looking up at the screen, and I look across the aisle, and about four people down are my six friends, all singing Christmas carols together on the front row. And the only thing I could think was, Modern family. <laughs> Figure out how to get straight people as excited about serving and engaging as the gay men and women I know, we would have a volunteer backlog. That's my experience in our churches. Well, I, I'm a gay person, I'll just read it to you. A gay person, when I say gay men and women, okay, a gay person who still wants to attend church after the way the church has treated the gay community, I'm telling you, they have more faith than I do. They have more faith than a lot of you. You can't start with the Bible says the Bible. I mean, you can, the Bible says the Bible says the Bible says, but here's the thing. Everybody else now knows what else the Bible says. It, it, it's, so now I'm beginning to spit and match on the six day creation, young earth, old earth, Levitical law, homosexuality. I mean, it's like, oh gosh, you know, we're, the issue is who is Jesus? That's the issue. And if you get that straight, the dominoes start falling in, um, you know, good directions for the most part. I think the only way we can get there, Andy, is by saying the Bible says. No, we, Bible, we don't have to say that. If I, if I could finish the thought, the Bible says that Jesus rose again from the dead. That's no, how it actually know. doesn't say that. That's how you know Jesus rose from the dead, because the biblical witness gives you that testimony that Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, that Bible is where you get the message that Jesus rose again from the dead. Both no, it's, it's not, <laughs> because the Bible doesn't say anything. John did, Moses did, 
David did. And that's in the Bible. Paul did. But it was only in the Bible once it got put in the Bible.